and welcome everybody to another session of Thrive in Health and Healing. I am Susanna Kennedy and I am very honored and blessed to have the amazing Brandon Bays with us again today. No one had given us a method at that time. Yeah. How? How do you get access to these cell memories and, and not only get access to them, but to release the stored pain there, the consciousness, the hurt, the shame, the blame, come to an understanding and forgiveness so that when new cells are born, they're born devoid of that old programming as new regenerative cells. Can't believe that more doctors haven't asked this question because they yeah. end that, that very question, how you address it and how Deepak has addressed it is what is shifting the whole consciousness of healing on this planet. And yeah. and before we were not looking at ourselves as this whole, you know, this connective being. Brandon, how are you doing? Hey, let me turn up my audio here. Um, sorry. No, it's fine. Don't worry. For those of you who are jo joining for the first time, Thrive is a platform that brings together some of the best coaches, teachers, and healers in the world to facilitate you creating the best version of your life that you possibly can. And Brandon Bayes is an incredible teacher that I've been watching I think practically my whole life, at least the last <laughs> years of my life, I've just always admired and honored her work and commitment to raising global consciousness through healing. So Brandon, I hope that it is coming across clear for you now. Welcome again. How are you doing today? <laughs> A heartfelt namaste. And I'm so delighted to once again come on to live TV, to Thrive TV, which is also live <laughs> <laughs> with you, Susanna. And I, I think it's such a beautiful thing that you're doing for humanity and for South Africa and for the world to always bring different teachers on and to give work that people can undergo to really liberate their lives and find wholeness and potentialize themselves. So I'm grateful to be part of that. Oh, thank you so much, Brandon. I'm so honored to have teachers like you, um, you know, making themselves available on this platform. I know that you spoke this weekend as well at the first international online connection summit with only female speakers. How did that go for you? Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I, I, I it was an odd thing, but I could almost feel everybody with me and, um, Actually, uh, later today, I'm going to be giving a webinar to those people. And I think about 800 people are going to be joining me in that webinar this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a beautiful time. And I got a chance to listen to the speaker who was before me. And it, it seems like all of us are making an invitation to humanity that, you know, even though the global circumstances, the chaos, the pent up everything that we're in right now, this pressure cooker and you know, with the George Floyd uh, event that happened, it's like someone lit the spark and a powder keg erupt, erupted. And it's yeah. almost like the deep issues that were already buried in your cells, mm -hmm. something lit that spark and vroom, they're up, all emerging. And what I was sharing is that it's not our life circumstances that create these, you know, these big eruptions of upset, frustration, rage, outrage, uh, feeling restless, controlled, out of control, fearing for our livelihood, fearing for our health, for our beloved's health. It's, it's, it didn't happen as a result of the pandemic. Because mm -hmm. what I've learned and what I think many of your listeners and those who watch this know is that let's say you're in traffic there and you're in Joburg and you're just driving along and just someone cuts off right in front of you. And <laughs> up comes the road rage, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but they didn't come in the middle of the night. 
and strict and and put that rage inside of you. Mm. What happened is they pushed your button and up came the buried issue, the buried rage. It was just triggered. And right now the whole world is triggered. And yeah. it's it's been very beautiful to see how we're uniting in these protests uh, against in injustice in the police police system and racism and prejudice and divisions, not be, just between color, but uh, prejudice with this gender, religious, countrywide. It's just driven up to the surface. This that's been living festering inside of us for so long. And I'm so thrilled I have the journey because mm -hmm. we in, uh, in Greece here, we have been in lockdown. We went way before other people went into lockdown and for over three months and um, it's eased in the last three weeks. It's not fully eased. And I could feel the whole world feeling pent up. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and feeling controlled and locked down. And, and I knew it was going to erupt. And then we needed something like what happened with George Floyd to really point to this that's systemic and endemic in all of us. And what I, I, I really am so grateful because I get journey processes once a week when I'm on tour because I know there's more than one cell memory stored inside and I feel it's a huge gift. And I, actually I would be out of integrity if I didn't clear whatever's blocking me, whatever's obscuring me or holding me back. So I'm really glad that you are offering these teachings, these tools to your listeners and your watchers. And uh, just a, it's such a time. I feel like if ever there was a time it's now. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, no, I agree with you um, wholeheartedly. And it's amazing while you were speaking, the, the sun, I'm in Cape Town and it's a very cloudy day. It's kind of like a London day um, yeah, yeah. and kind of wait. But as you were speaking, the rays of light from the sun just broke through the, the clouds. It was, it was very, very beautiful um, <laughs> for me. But um but what I, what I was going to say is two things. The one is that, um, you know, they say that the apocalypse, so many people think the apocalypse is the end, but really the root of the word apocalypse, it's actually Greek, um, is the unveiling of, you know, the revealing of. Awesome. And, and the time that we are in right now is exactly what you're talking about, is, is the apocalypse, but it's, it's the unveiling of the truths. It's the unveiling yeah. of the, the core truths of who we are as humans and and what is holding us back from those layers of healing that that are so systemic like you said you know this all of this stuff that has come up i'm constantly i always make sure i stop and question myself like where am i not seeing you know layers of myself that are not healed and i was very blessed yesterday to work with one of your wonderful coaches and um, we worked for three hours and i did my wow. first journey yes um and it was it was in, incredible it was a wonderful wonderful process which i do want to chat a little bit about because i know that you are going to be having a journey intensive this coming weekend that I people am. can still join you on um but the my wish she asked my soul for my wish for the process and it echoed exactly what you said i said anything that I am not seeing anything that is in the way. And I remember it so clearly that is not allowing me to see what is blocking me from living from a place of just pure love. Let me see that wow. so that it can be cleared, you know? Wow. And that was so powerful for me. Yeah, it was incredibly powerful for me. Um, the journey was incredibly powerful for me. And I, I wanted to chat to you a little bit about that because I want people to understand what the journey process is. How did you come to the journey process um, specifically? Because we know that you went through a miraculous healing, but yeah. how did the process come to you? Well, you know, for those of you that are new to the journey, originally in 1992, I was diagnosed with a basketball sized tumor. Mm -hmm. And 
I was really, as you can imagine, catapulted on a huge spiritual awakening and a spiritual journey and a profound healing journey. And I healed in only six and a half weeks time mm. without drugs or surgery. And what the gift of my own healing process was, is I found a means for all of us to go on a journey inside of our bodies and get access to something that are called cell memories. And what we know about the cells in the body is that they all replicate at varying speeds. So for instance, if you've ever had a suntan, you'll notice that your suntan fades in about three weeks time. And that's because the old cells slough off and are replaced by new regenerative cells. Stomach lining takes three days for all new cells. Liver cells take six weeks to have an all new liver. And I mean, the eye cells are what blow my mind because, you know, your eye feels firm, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know that in less than two days, in less than 48 hours, you will have an all new inner eyeball. What? And it, this is so <laughs> possible for the thinking mind to conceive of. And the only way I could put it in a context to understand it was my mom had, mom had one of those eye operations, you know, where they slit the eye open, insert a lens, put the flap on and put the patch on. And only a day and a half later, she could see clearly. As a matter of fact, there won't be a single molecule that was here today that will be here a year from now. Mm. You are literally all new. But at the time that I had... Uh, the tumor, there was a huge amount of research going on into the field of cellular healing. And why is it some people healed without drugs or surgery? And mm -hmm. we know that the cells are always replicating. But I remember at the time, Dr. Deepak Chopra, who was at that time a chief surgeon general in a hospital in Boston, he wasn't the guru he used to become today. And he asked a question no one else was asking. He said, well, why is it when we know that the cells are replicating constantly and the body is regenerating, why would you look at a liver that's riddled with cancer? Why would it be riddled with cancer in January and then still be riddled with it in June? Mm -hmm. Good question to ask. And it's what an he postulated at that time. What? I can't believe that more doctors haven't asked this question because they yeah. in that, that very question, how you address it and how Deepak has addressed it is what is shifting the whole consciousness of healing on this planet. Yeah, it was for me, I, I'd studied with him and what he, I'd seen all the case studies, but what he postulated at that time is that stored inside the degenerative, de degenerative cells, let's say it's liver cancer, and is are what he called old phantom memories. And what we know about our emotions and the cells, and this is known by scientists all around the world, is that when you feel a strong emotion and you repress it, Mm. It releases a quantifiable biochemistry, which will go to certain cell receptors in the body and block them, rendering the cells incapable of communicating with the rest of the cells in the body. And if over time illness happens, it happens where the cells are blocked, obviously. Conversely, what's also known to be true is that when we feel our emotions very naturally, you know, openly, like a child does, our cell receptors remain open. And so there's a biochemistry that gets released when you repress mm. your emotions. And what Chopra was postulating was that these old repressed emotions, when that biochemistry gets released and our cell receptors are blocked, the cell memory of what happened to us at the time, the unspoken words, the pain, the shame, the devastation, the fear, the anger, whatever it was, it all gets stored in the cells. Mm -hmm. And then before that cell dies, it passes on its programming to the next cell generation. So the next cell generation is born as an exact replica of the previous cell generation. And so this programming gets passed on and on. As a matter of fact, when I went to the surgeon who I first got diagnosed with, she said it would probably started as just one cell and, and when I was eight years old, which duplicated into two. Mm -hmm. And then exponentially, as I started to really get aggressive, 
in the last three months before I went in to see her, uh, it, it just it just it replicated exponentially, and uh, you know it ended up being the size of a basketball. But no one had given us a method at that time. Yeah. How how do you get access to these cell memories and and not only get access to them, but to release the stored pain there, the consciousness, the hurt, the shame, the blame come to an understanding and forgiveness so that when new cells are born, they're born devoid of that old programming as new regenerative cells. So even though I'd seen the case studies of people who had healed without drugs or surgery, it had all happened spontaneously. Somehow, like me, they spontaneously gotten access to what Chopra called the infinite intelligence. The part mm -hmm. of you that makes your heart beat and your eyes shine and your hair grow. This vast field of love that is your own soul that is making all the cells regenerate. And the second thing that they had common is somehow they spontaneously, just spontaneously got access to the cell memory and the consciousness that was stored there and mm -hmm. somehow just spontaneously released it let it go. And when the new cells were born, they were born as new regenerative cells. And so mine first happened, my healing happened spontaneously where I had three journey processes that happened spontaneous where somehow I opened into this infinite field, this pure healing potential. And somehow I was guided by that to the actual cells stored inside my body. And when I uncovered the cell memory there, I thought it can't be this, you know, a memory of childhood abuse. I mean, God knows as a therapist, I've been through eight years of therapy on it. And my mind was going, been there, done that, got the t-shirt on that old cellular issue, that old cell memory, that old consciousness. But it was like my mind was saying I had it handled, but my body and my soul Mm -hmm. saying, you haven't got it handled. Mm -hmm. And so part of my healing journey was I need to face and clear the emotional issues that are part of the karma of what I'm here in this world to clear and face, to learn the life lessons, to come to peace with that issue, to come to forgiveness of myself, of others, of life, and as a result of undergoing that spontaneously three times during my own healing journey in that six and a half week period of time, and then subsequently working with thousands and now in the last 26 years or now 28 years since then, uh, working with hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, the journey, as you know, is in 39 countries and it's in 24 languages. And it's work that's being used by the medical profession to get to the emotional corollary is of what is co-creating illness. As a matter of fact, in Tel Aviv, there's actually two hospitals there that after you've undergone your either your cancer operation or your heart operation, you go for a week into a recovery center where you use journey work to come to a place of wholeness and peace and to uncover the emotional corollary to the physical illness. And, as you know, uh, Susanna, originally the journey was famous for all the healing that what went on physically. But over time, it hasn't become just about physical healing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also about emotional healing. Like you, you wanted to really clear whatever was blocking you from living as an expression of your divine potential as a, an expression of love. And so this work is known for liberating you, for awakening you to yourself, to this love, and mm -hmm. also giving you the tools that you need to go on this journey inside yourself and get access to those repressed cell memories and go through your own process of healing your own process of letting go, your own process of understanding forgiveness so the body and the being can heal. And so it's, it's used much by psychiatrists, psychologists, medical doctors in hospitals, and mainly by people from all walks of life who realize that they want to come home. 
mm. to who they are and you to know, clear what blocks them. To clear everything. You know, this it's so, it's so, so, so beautiful because in in my teachings, I also I speak about this all the time that it's it's not the connection between the mind, body, spirit, and heart. You know, that that connection is so it's so real. It's actually so tangible. And, yeah. and before we were not looking at ourselves as this whole, you know, this connective being that everything is connected. And you know, the way you described, you know, the, the disease when it happens, I always say disease is dis-ease. It's a <laughs> dis-ease of the, of the soul, of the heart, of the mind that is now physicalizing in your body, you know, and and I loved one thing that was so great for me doing the process yesterday was just remembering, just being that humble student because I am forever the humble student. I think one of the reasons why I started Thrive Network is because although I'm a teacher as well, I, I'm always the humble student. There's always more for me to learn. And, and I know so many of you out there, please give me just... A, a thumbs up or a smile if you can associate with this when you've worked on something so many times like a specific pattern or a specific wound and it's like oh come on surely I've dealt with this now you know, surely it's over um give me a thumbs up if you guys can relate okay yes I can see thumbs up coming but the the beauty of the process yesterday for me was something that like you were saying, something I had spoken about, something I thought I had worked through and was finished. That was, and it was the thing that I least expected to come up. Always. Oh, you know, <laughs> and, and it popped up in so many versions of me at so many ages. And it was the same one link thing. And, and that for me was amazing because I went, what? Really? Okay. Humbled again okay, back to center again, okay, find compassion again, you know, and find forgiveness again, and just going into those layers again. It is profound work for anybody that is listening right now who has not read Brandon's book. I just highly, highly recommend it. I will put a link. Um, she has been so generous and is giving the journey, the book away for free at the moment, but she's also doing the journey work. Now, I read the book Brandon, I think I read your book 20 years ago. Is that possible? When was it published? It 1998. Yeah, so that's absolutely possible. Yes, I read it. It was around 1998. Nin no, yeah. it was around 1999, I think, that I read it. And, and, and I remit, I'll never forget reading your book, ever, ever, ever. Um, and it shifted something in me profoundly. But going on the actual journey is a whole nother level. And so I invite mm -hmm. you guys, if you have not done this work before, to join Brandon this weekend. I'll put the details up for you so you can learn a bit more. But maybe, Brandon, you want to just give them a little overview of what is to be expected this weekend. I know it's the first time you're doing an intensive online, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, like you, I've been live streaming ever since the very first live stream platform came out in 2011. And we were kind of at the forefront of what was happening with that. But the journey intensive that I've been doing for the last 26 years is a signature course that is the foundation of all the work and is a huge and very deep immersion, highly experiential. And it was the one thing I wasn't willing to live stream because I wanted people to have the huge support of the journey practitioners, like you went to one yesterday, and to have a support of a live presenter there with them, and for them to feel like as they're undergoing the work, they have people there to hold an embrace for them, to ask questions of, and if deeper issue comes up, to work with them. And, and I, I just felt I've always held a very powerful embrace because it is the in-depth work. Uh, on the Saturday, not only will you get it, getting the live stream teaching from me, but you'll immediately after the first hour start going into the process work. And it's like step by step and you'll be guided and supported by trainers as you're doing that. And then, and then again, it, you'll go deeper into in the next process and learning more. And after you go to lunch, you'll be partnered up with a, 
a partner of your own choosing. And you'll go into a, a room where the two of you on a Zoom platform will have privacy to work together, but access to a trainer. So you can be em embraced and supported should anything come up. You can boom, 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 type in, hey, help, we need help. And there's someone there to embrace you. So it's highly interactive with integration and it's even deeper the next day. And I, I my experience in life is that you learn best from the inside out, mm -hmm. not the outside in. You can learn all the teaching of the planet, mm -hmm. but I don't think anyone can teach you how to heal. Part of your own healing journey is you must go inside and decide to surrender and open up to let your soul guide you to what's stored inside there, to the, the cell memories, to the emotional issues, to the pain that's there. And there has to be a willingness in you to release it, to let the story go, to, to come to understanding what's happened to you and to forgiveness. It's only when you wholly participate that then this kind of radical healing at a cellular level, at an emotional level, at the heart level, on all levels of being, at the level of the soul, can happen. And I always call it a transmutational process. This isn't about transforming the way you're thinking. Mm. This is about transmuting darkness into light. It's mm. about transmuting old stored consciousness into wholeness. And it, the reason it's so welcomed by the medical field is because of the results it gets. It gets effective, lasting results. And so I wanted you to have a two-day immersion, not just a cursory little process that you do online, but an immersion in this work on Saturday and Sunday. And so this is the first time because we're in lockdown that I had to take a deep breath in and open wide. And we've spent months investigating the technology, creating a whole platform. So you could have this hugely live interactive process as if you are in a seminar room with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm told that the presence that you are immersed in will fill your room up. And so you'll have huge support Saturday and Sunday. And in European time, it goes from nine until 6.30. But what I recommend is rather than, you know, you can hear all day till the cows come home from me, and even hear from Susanna, who's going to be attending this uh, live journey intensive. But my suggestion is you get on the link and listen to and read what other people are saying about what their experience was. Because I feel like all of life is conspiring now mm -hmm. to say to us, it's time to get real. It's time to stop procrastinating. It's time to get off your path of postponement. Mm -hmm. It's time to dive in. And it's time to clear whatever your soul is here to clear in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. To liberate yourself, not just for your health and well-being and your body's health, but for your heart to feel like you feel at home in your own skin. And so the journey is known for teachers to take it around the world and say they may have worked on an issue for 20, 30 years. And it wasn't until they did the journey and they cleared it at the deepest level of being that that issue finally finished. And so I feel like the time is here and it, I'm very proud of the product I never dreamt I would ever do a journey intensive online. And I yet in the filming and the creation of it all, I'm very proud of the quality of it. And I think people will be very blessed and very lucky if they could get in on this, the first ever in 26 years, live journey intensive online. Absolutely, Brandon. Um, guys, it is 11 o'clock, so I'm going to quickly do my little shout out and thank you. And then I'm going to wrap up the show because I know Brandon needs to be somewhere and I need to get on to my next show. But at 11 o'clock in South Africa, the most 
people on the planet are awake at the same time. And so I howl three times and yell, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the incredible people who have kept us going during this lockdown. So I hope you will all join me. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. So I know that's crazy, but it does just create this vibration of excitement and happiness. And that is what we want in this world. Brandon Bays has been with us today. I'm so, so, so humbled and, and grateful for your presence here today. Um, I just want to knock on a few points before you guys go. I also spoke at the summit this weekend. I felt very honored to be a speaker alongside you, Brandon, this weekend. <laughs> Um, and one of the things that I spoke about was that this new earth, some people call it the new earth, some people say that it's the fifth dimension, whatever it is, brings with it an energy, it's a gift, it's an accelerated healing energy, and now is the time, now mm. is the time, so now is the time to do the hard work, I'm saying that in inverted commas, because it doesn't mean you need to suffer through it, if you surrender into those feelings, and go into process, and go into processes like the journey, where you will be supported and loved through the process, the more you feel, the easier it will become to go through these emotions, so I invite you to join Brandon this weekend for a healing journey. I am so looking forward to it, Brandon. Um, so thank you so much. And thank you for being here today. Whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching a recording of it, we live in an energetic world. And so an energetic matrix has been created here today between Brandon and I and everyone that has been watching. And you're receiving this information at the exact right time for you. So if the journey intensive has passed, don't worry, Brandon is going to do more. So you can still check out her website. Um, and please do tag any friends that you feel would gain something from watching this video that we've just created together. And please do share this on your pages um, because our mission, mine and Brandon's, is to heal the world and to help as many people as possible. So Brandon, thank you with all of my love. And thank, and thank you. you with thank all of my heart. <laughs> have a beautiful day and i'll see you this weekend yes looking forward <laughs> to it i felt namaste everyone and to you as well